the volatile acidity cash still uses to measure um, how much bacteria we have in a 100 milliliter sample, so it's representative of what the VA might be in the barrel of wine or in a lot of wine. Um, let's see, so it's just a distillation process. The chamber gets really hot and the um, distillate condenses or evaporates and then condenses and comes out as a, a clear liquid, but it's the bacteria is in there and it smells really gross and it tastes like dirty water. <laughs> I've tasted it before. It's Did not stuff? Uh, I've tasted it before because I just want to know what it tastes like. It's not harmful for you. I mean, you don't want to drink this stuff. But huh. <laughs> so this is this essentially is a still, a mini still. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the chamber boils and you have water running through it to cool down the still. If you didn't, the whole contraption would blow up. <laughs> so you always have to make sure you have water running, cool water running. So this is our ebulliometer, or in layman's terms, this measures alcohol mm -hmm. content. And just this one's really easy. You just fill up a, a wine sample up to this red line, and uh, you have to make sure it calibrate with boiling distilled water um, before you add the wine sample. <laughs> Which should have zero alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the, you calibrate with, um, you find out what the boiling point, the temperature is. Okay. Uh, the distilled water, mm -hmm. and it's it's a little different every day because barometric pressure changes. Hmm. So, so the, and then the, the atmosphere pressure actually will affect this test. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. So as far as that's how I understand it. But and then when you say you have a boiling point of distilled water at 99 degrees Fahrenheit, you put in this sample of wine, which I don't have right now, but when you turn it on, it boils, and maybe the wine boils at 89 degrees Fahrenheit, and you measure Yes, ma'am. This machine is a spectrophotometer, which we use to measure malic, the amount of malic in the wine, and then also residual sugar. And uh, you just put little samples of wine cubettes mixed with other enzymes. It measures enzymatic reactions. It's complicated, and I'm not really going to go into all of it. Um, but in here, you put the little cubettes full of wine and the enzymes to measure the amount of you know, sugar Malik, and um, this measures by wavelength, so in nanometers. Mm -hmm. So it, you can measure a lot of different um, reactions in here, not mm -hmm. just with wine, but other things, which I'm not sure about. But I know you can because it just measures through wavelength. Um, I bet that's an expensive piece of equipment. <laughs> yeah, this one wasn't too bad. I mean, this is used and it works well. Mm -hmm. But for a new one, yeah, they would be very expensive. And everything, so you can get the balloon oh, yeah. too. Now the VA. Because this is boiling, and you're going to have the distillate evaporate and then recondense back down here, and it's coming out into this. Um, so cool, glass. cool water is running through that outside jacket yeah. on the left. Yeah. Yeah, it runs through like right here and here. And so what's it, what exactly is filling up in that flask right now? Right, like what, this is yeah. the distillate. This is the bacteria. That's so it, it takes out this boiling chamber, this boiling water. It um, it evaporates, you know, that bacteria mm -hmm. in solution, and then it recondenses up here so that what you're getting is just the pure bacteria and none of the wine. Just so it's separating the bacteria. Hmm from the rest of the wine, the volatile acidity, basically. V VA is, it's not the bacteria, I should say, but it's the volatile acidity, but bacteria metabolizes different acids into volatile acidity or bad acids that can turn your wine into vinegar. You definitely don't want. Yeah, so it's just, this is like, this is the nasty acid that's right. being. Of all of, of all of the of all of the compounds we've looked at so far, that's the least desirable thing. Huh? Yeah, I mean, because it it mutes fruit flavors. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, a little bit of VA I've heard is desirable. Some wineries like it a little higher levels than others, but the less that you have, the better. <laughs> the last thing that I wanted to say is that we have all this equipment here. It's a small lab, mm -hmm. and. 
some of this equipment was pricey, other, I guess others weren't as much, we got some good deals on it, but we can run all the necessary tests we need without sending our samples out to a lab, and when you're constantly sending out samples to a lab, like it's really expensive. And it takes time. Yeah, so you have to wait for the results, but we can get the results very quickly here. And, you know, in the beginning, they're just spending some money, mm -hmm. chunk of money to buy all the cloud equipment, but it's very economical and we ended up saving. Well, yeah, so we've got a full lab here at Duke. Mm -hmm. All the Amanda, thank you so much. Thanks, Adam. So much for giving us this tour. I'm sure our viewers appreciate it. We'll see you guys next week, Friday, in Cellarat TV.